How many of you out there have some beliefs that limit you and you know better, like you know they're not really true, but they still get you emotionally and stop you? Who's got some of these out there? Raise your hand if you say I. Say I. Well, you intellectually know they're not right, but they still control you because they're deep in your subconscious. They literally are a pattern that's gotten locked inside of you. And so what we're going to do is decimate them. We have a process. It's experiential. It's not intellectual so that we can literally scratch the CD. Remember I talked about that? You listen to an old CD in the old days and listen to music because there was a pattern on that CD that the laser picked up. And if you got a CD in your head that's keeping you overweight, set of beliefs, set of emotions, and I try to put a new one inside there, it's not going to work if I put them on top of each other. But if I pull out your old CD, right? Remember the old CDs? And I take out a needle and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth across that belief, that emotion, that pattern. Now if you try to put it in, it'll never work the same way. So now your brain's open to something new. And then we're going to plant the something new that's going to shift you. You can look online and see all the people who lost 10, 20, 30, 40, some people 250 pounds because they made this psychological emotional shift and they know what to do. In every city virtually in the world, someone's dying driving a car, but we don't not drive our cars because otherwise you have to stay home and do nothing the rest of your life. So I say to all of you, grab your courage. Courage does not mean you're not afraid. We've said this several times. It means you're scared shitless, but you're going to do it anyway. And if you're going to make any money, if you're going to build a business, if you're going to have a great relationship, you're going to have to take some risks. Intelligent risks, not stupid. I'm not saying break laws or rules or whatever the case may be where you live. I mean, comply with the rules, but don't live in fear. And don't let your uncertainty keep you from taking action. Because if you do that, you're going to live that for the rest of your life, and it's not a happy life. Think about it. Most people don't live that philosophy of stretching that I shared with you at Jim Rohn taught me. This whole philosophy was if you can't, then you must. Remember? If I can't do it, then I make myself do it immediately. Now, again, it's not if you can't jump off a cliff, you must. you got to be smart. But if you say, I would be a better person if I took this action, but I'm afraid. Or I'd be a better father, a better husband, better friend, better soul, better spirit, better anything. Businessman, businesswoman. And I know that would happen and I really don't want to do it. I make myself do it. That's why I have the privilege of being with you today. Because I keep breaking through. But most of us let our mind get in the way. Breathe in your heart, make a gut decision for whatever's right with you, and I'm cool whatever you do, either way. But if I were you, I wouldn't just stop with a little bit you got here. If you come back to me after today, you must know there's value. So consider what you want to do, and whatever it is, we support you. We mentioned something earlier, but I want to make sure you put it in your notes. And that is the state we're in, in the moment, the state we're in at any moment, powerfully impact, impacts the meaning we associate to something. The state we're in in the moment powerfully impacts the meaning that we associate to something or that we assign to something. So one way to change what things mean to you is just change your darn state. Is that true? I mean, if you're feeling great, do things just kind of bounce off you that normally if you're feeling upset, you change the way you look at them probably, change the way you feel about it, you bet. So we need to really still manage our state. We talked about that a great deal last session. I want to make sure that that's part of your life's work. Your life's work is really learning how to live in a way where you spend most of your time enjoying yourself, very little time in pain. Most of your time in pleasure, very little pain. And living your life hopefully in a way where not only do you feel good all the time, but the people around you feel good just by being around you. But because they're around you, they feel a lot less pain and a ton of pleasure. See, that's my idea of success. Success is when you learn to live your life in a way where you experience tons of pleasure every day and almost no pain. And simultaneously, where the way you live also causes the people around you to experience very little pain and tons of pleasure. Then you know you're really successful. Because if you feel good and nobody else does, you're a failure. Now, that doesn't mean you go around and try and make everybody feel good. Some people have an investment in feeling bad because they think feeling bad equals feeling good. Are there people to believe that? Yes or no? Because they think if I feel bad, then people will notice me or they'll love me more, they'll help me more, I'll get more attention, which means feeling good. People have weird crap they live up inside their head about how to get to feeling good. Some people think, I'm going to feel good when I make a million dollars. Some people are like, when I have this, this, and this, when I get married, have these three children, this and this, then I'll feel good. Some people have, well, I'll feel good if I feel bad, because then people notice me and make me feel good. Or you could just, like, choose to feel good. Which one do you think might be a more intelligent approach? Because who's in control there? 
you are. You don't have to worry about the environment. By the way, when you're feeling good, it tends to make you want to feel even better. It makes you share good feelings with other people, which makes them feel good, which makes them reciprocate usually. Not always, but usually. Kind of nice. So the bottom line is we've got to manage our state still. And as a reminder, as far as that's concerned, changing state means change meaning. The way you can do it is either by changing your what? Anybody remember from last session? Change your what? Change your what? Change your physiology. Physiology, again, means the way you move, the way you breathe, your facial expressions, your gestures. The way you use your body determines the way you feel. You've got to remember that for the rest of your life. If you're not feeling the way you want to feel, first thing you do is just change the way you're moving.